Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Come on in the room. Come on. This is the day that the Lord has given us brand new life, brand new mercies that he's given us this morning. And it is time for us to give the Lord our first time for us to bless him, time for us to magnify him just because of who he is in our lives. Good morning, Dr. Evelyn. Good morning to all of you that are joining this morning. It is a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. Sister Terry, good morning. Sister Cherise, good morning to you. So good to see that you are out and about and just loving on the Lord, loving on your family. Good morning, Sister Bernice. To all of you, good morning. It is a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. I'm excited this morning. People of God, good morning, Sister Sherry. I am excited this morning. I am. Um, I was um, up early this morning. Good morning, Bishop Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for, so much for the word that you share with us every single morning. Listen, I was excited this morning. Uh, good morning, Sister Stephanie. As the Lord was just ministering to me all night about this particular word. Good morning, Sister Lisa. As I was really... Um, in prayer about the people of God, about, um, good morning, Sister Shante, Sister Nicole, good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Edna. About the people of God who seems like they're they're in a, a point in their lives where they're turning back. Good morning, Sister Melanie. I'm going to go for the Lord in prayer. Let me just do that real quickly. Father, we just bless your name. Lord, I thank you, God, for who you are. I thank you, Lord, that you are King of Kings. And, and Lord, there is nobody like you, God. I thank you, God, for the favor that you give to us, O oh Lord God, and for the brand new mercies that you've given us, God, yet this morning. To hear another word from you, Lord God, that I know is going to bless the hearts and the minds of the people, Lord God, because it blessed me. I thank you, Lord God, for what we are going to share this morning. And Lord, I don't take any credit for it, Lord, because it is your word, your word, Lord, God, that it's going to go throughout, throughout the airwaves, oh God, and it's going to bless the people, God, in a mighty way. Now, Lord, I pray that you allow me to decrease in myself and increase in you, Lord Jesus Christ, who gives me the ability to do all things well. And because of that, Lord, I know that this word will fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Rochelle. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your assistance with me this weekend. Sister Mary, uh, thank you also for joining. Um, this morning, we're talking about I refuse to give up. I refuse to go back. I refuse to to go back to the way that I was before. My God, I refuse to do that. And I'm telling you, I was excited about this word. I've been meditating on it. And just for the people of God, sometimes as, as pastors, as shepherds, as leaders, um, many of you may or may not know, we pray for the people of God. We pray for not only those that are in our congregations, but we pray for those who are in our communities. And we pray for them because of what we see that may be happening in their lives or what may be going on with them. And sometimes we see that perhaps they may be slipping or drifting from the things of God. The word is the word in the Lord um, in Luke chapter 9, verse number 62. I'm talking about going back. I'm talking about giving up. That's what I'm talking about this morning. Good morning, Sister Donna. Brother Lorenzo, good morning to you. Sister Lisa, good morning. The word of the Lord says in um, in Luke 9, 62. Can anybody hear me? Sister Bernice can't hear me. If you can hear me, just let me know that you can hear me and, and then we'll check Sister Bernice's um, technology there. Um, but the word of the Lord just says, no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. No man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And when this was word was spoken, it was spoken, thank you, because um, the Lord was was looking for those to come with him. And one man said, listen, I'm gonna, I'll come with you, but I want to go bury my father first. And the Lord said to him, he said, listen, let the dead bury the dead. It's, there's some things that you got to do. He said, listen, no man who puts his hand to the plow, if you're going to work, you can't look back. He says, if you're putting your hand to the plow, if you're going to work, you got to move forward. Because if not, the word here is saying that you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And the Lord knew that you can't go forward while you're looking back. You can't, listen, imagine trying to cut the grass and you're looking backwards. And imagine trying to drive, but you're looking backwards. You're just continually looking. Good morning, Sister Nimby. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're continually looking in the rear view mirror. My so my son just told me a story, and this this just came to me just now. Um, he was with some friends, and the friends were they were driving in a car, and 
and there was another car that was coming out of a space, coming out of the street. And people were honking the horn and blowing at this car, but the car kept going. And my son said that his friend, the one that was driving, was looking in the in the rear view mirror, looking to see what was coming behind him. And he said as he was looking through the rear view mirror, the other car continued to come. And he didn't see the other car because he was looking in the rear view mirror. And then as he my son began to see that the car was going to hit them. They were going to hit the car. He said he grabbed the wheel and he turned the wheel. He said to me, he said, Mom, I saved all of us from having an accident. And he said, my, my friend was looking in the rear view mirror. And I thought, why was he looking in the rear view mirror? He says he was trying to see what was behind him because people were blowing the horn. He got distracted. But how many of you know you cannot go forward, you cannot move forward in the things of God, you cannot be healed, you cannot be whole in the things of God while you're looking behind you because there is danger, there can be danger in front. You cannot go forward looking backward. And so some of us, you know, we are walking this walk and I'm, I'm talking about it from the standpoint of those, thank you, Sister Bernice, good morning, Sister Kelly, of those who are on this journey and you've been on this journey for some time now and, and something has happened in your life where you, you're getting a little weary. The Bible says, don't grow weary in well-doing for in good in due season you shall reap if you don't faint, but you're growing a little weary. And I kind of look at it kind of like a, a, a midlife crisis, a midlife spiritual crisis in your life. You're growing a little weary, but I'm telling you this morning that even as you have reached a period of transition, in your life, I want to challenge you today not to to go back, not to move back, not to um, take down, not to come down, not to stop doing the things that you're doing. But I want to challenge you this morning to celebrate that time of transition that you are in. Celebrate and then ask God what it is that you should do from this point forward instead of going back. Um, Charles Stanley, if you read any of the material that he's written, he he said there are three kinds of of Christians. There are three Three kinds of servants of God. There are those who drift, those who drift from the Lord. There are those who just give up, just throw in the towel. And then there are those who just go on and do what the Lord has called for them to do. This morning, good morning, Sister Valerie. I want to encourage you to be the kind of servant, the kind of Christian that goes on and celebrate whatever it is that is happening in your life right now. Whatever it is that would make you want to go back, to turn around, to look back. Listen, just like Lot's wife, to, to look back on the things that, listen, you came out of. You got to move forward. You know, this, this world is dangerous. This world is, is deceitful. Good morning, Sister Valerie. This world will trick you. There are many challenges that many of us, all of us face in this world, in this life. There are many roadblocks. There are, there are detours. That, that t the bridges are out. I tell you, there are uh, the roundabouts, the things that turn you around, get you frustrated and confused about the world that you are in. But you've got to say... To the enemy, you got to say even to yourself that you refuse to go back. Galatians 4 has a word in verses 8 through 11. And it just simply says this. It says, formerly when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now that you have come to know God or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak? and worthless elementary principles of the world, whose slaves you want to be once more. You observe days and months and seasons and years, and I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain, is what the word of the Lord is saying. And, and I would say many of us have found ourselves in a place where forward looks hard. The road ahead, it looks hard and so therefore you want to turn back. You want to look back. You see all the people turning it up. You see all the people having a good time, drinking and dancing and partying. And you see all of that. And you've gotten to a place where you're saying, you know what? I think I'd rather go back and do that. I think I'd rather be back in the day where, listen, life was a little more simple for me. 
So when I'm looking ahead, it seems a little more difficult. Now I've got some children. I've maybe got a spouse and I got a job that I got to keep. I've got responsibilities. I got debts. I got student loans. I got all kind of things. I got people that are watching me, people that are depending on me. Good morning, Sister Roz, Bishop Holiday. I got people that are counting on me to do things that people pulling on me from one direction to another direction. And, and you said forward looks a little difficult for me. I think I'd rather just go back. There are things you tried to move forward in your career. You tried to move forward in your relationships. You tried to move forward in your walk with the Lord, but yet it seems like things are getting harder and harder and harder for you. But listen, as you move forward in the things of God, you realize that you have to keep going. You can't stop. But what you think though is you think that is going to require more of you than you're willing to give. You believe that some of us, sometimes we believe that moving forward, good morning, Sister Natalie, is going to take more than we're willing to give. And so therefore, it seems like it'll be a little more easy for me to just go back. Maybe I don't want to continue in the struggle. And that's where the Galatians were in this passage of scripture. They wanted to go back. They were in a very tough spot. Good morning to you, Sister Mary. They were in a tough situation and they couldn't see how they could go forward. And just like many of us, we can't see how we're going to get out of the financial situation that we're in. We can't see how we're going to get out of the relationship that we've gotten ourselves entangled in. They can't see how they're going to move out of it. So they're saying instead of us moving forward, we may as well Go back, and the, the Galatians here, in this case, were deserting the one who who had called them. They were defecting, defecting from their faith. Many of us have defected from our faith. We've turned away from God. We've turned, listen, to practicing idol worship. We've turned back to the things that, listen, the former things of life, the things that were comfortable to us when we didn't know God. But you do know him. You know God now. And so Paul is saying, listen, why? Why would you want to return back to Egypt after you have been freed from slavery? Why would we want to return back to somewhere? Listen, to the wilderness. Good morning, Brother Ron. Why? And so they too, the Galatians, just like the Israelites, wanted to return to slavery. You might recall how the Israelites responded when they heard the report of the spies that the promised land was filled with giants. Good morning, Sister Elaine. And the giants, listen, they, they saw them as grasshoppers. They got so confused. They got so upset about that report that they said, listen, we need a new replacement for Moses. They, all the people grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And, and they said, listen, we should have should have been that we died in the land of Egypt. Why do you got us out here in the wilderness? Because they didn't trust. And sometimes the reason that we want to go back is because we don't trust that God's going to bring us through. When he's brought us through so many things before, he's brought us through health issues. He's brought us through all kinds of situations, loss of loved ones, loss of children, loss of mom, dad. He's brought us through all of that and we survived. But yet we want to choose another leader. We want to turn back. We want to go back instead of going forward. But yet we are professing that we are Christians all the while. But still, instead of walking into the promised future that the Lord has for us, because the way gets a little hard, we get tempted to turn back. We get tempted to stop coming to church. We get tempted to stop reading the word of God, tempted to stop praying. For ourselves and tempted to stop praying for one another. And when the way forward, listen, when it's difficult, it forces you to do as the Bible says, as you said that you had, were doing all along, to walk by faith and not by sight. Good morning, Sister Dorothy. It forces you to live by faith and not to live by sight. And that's why. Going back is so much easier because you know what it is that you're returning to. You know where you've been. You know what you've seen. You know what you participated in. But what's ahead? The future, you haven't seen that yet. So it seems easy for me to go back to the old. But let me just say this to all of us this morning. I'm really serious about this word. Because I am so 
tired of the enemy killing and destroying the people of God, stealing from them because they're going back. They're turning back the way of the world instead of staying the way of God. When you turn back, it leaves you powerless. You're powerless to move forward. Why? Because you find that when you go back to the old way, good morning, Sister Demetria, the old way of life, you don't have strength. And you don't have the freedom that the Lord gives you to move forward. You don't have that. You, there's greater bondage. The Bible talks about, listen, when you, when you are redeemed, when you are saved, and when you are delivered from a thing, when your house is swept clean, the word of the Lord says you got to keep it clean. You got to maintain your deliverance, maintain your salvation. Or else what? He said, or else they'll come back. The demons, the tormentors, they'll come back seven times worse than they were before. And many of us don't even understand that word. That when we choose to go back, although we may have been tormented before we knew the Lord Jesus Christ or tormented because of a thing, we don't know that when we go back to the way of the world, when once we've been delivered from a thing and you go back into that or you go back and listen and the, and the demons come back, they said, oh, she has, he has swept his house clean, and, but he's not praying. He's not reading his word. He's not fasting. He's not worshiping me. He's not worshiping God as he should worship God. Let's go back. Matter of fact, why don't you come back? Lust, why don't you come back? He, he was only filled with envy before, but lust, why don't you come on back? And, and, and pride, why don't you come back too? Bitterness, why don't you come on back? And anger, why don't you come back as well? And oh, all the sinful things, they'll come back in your life and then you'll be powerless against the enemy because they're so forceful against you. And this is what Paul wanted the Galatians to understand. This is what I'm trying to say to you now. You can't turn back to your old habits, to the old way of life because it makes you powerless to get from there to where you want to go. Get It'll make you weak. Because you need to go where God has for you to go. There is a place that God has for you. But when you go back, I'm telling you, you go back to the former things, the old things, the old habits, the old way of life, the old way of talking, the old walk, the old places. It leaves you powerless to go forward and do the things that God has called for you to do. When the way of the, when the way, your way forward, when it's hard, you will start hearing voices. And it won't be the voice of God. It will be the voice of the enemy. It will be the voice telling you to come back. Come back to the old. It will be telling you, listen, that's hard. What, what, what you're getting ready to walk into, the enemy will tell you that's hard for you. It's too hard. He'll start calling you back. He'll start putting memories back in your head to show you how things used to be. How good that you used to have the good old days. He'll start talking to you about. But listen, don't listen to him. Don't listen to those voices. Don't listen to the voices of your memories. Because those are things, those are things that will try to attach themselves to you, talking to you, trying to make you go back to the old. The Bible says, if in man, any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You've got to turn a deaf ear to those voices that are trying to convince you that the old way was the right way and the, the, the back way was the best, the best way. Instead of telling you that to move forward in the things of God is what's going to bring victory in your life. Many of us, listen, we've gotten tired, we've gotten weary, we slowed down in the things of God. And, and not only does turning back, not only was, does going back, not only does looking back make you powerless, but it also makes you vulnerable. It makes you vulnerable to the things of the enemy. The Bible says that the enemy goes about looking to and fro whom he can devour. He wants to devour the people of God. He wants to devour the children of God. Why is it? Because he knows what it is that you're capable of. He knows the, the, the words that are capable of coming out of your mouth will bring power and will bring life to every situation. And he's trying to make sure that you don't use your words. He's trying to make sure you don't use your voice to bring power and life because you know he knows that once you understand how powerful you are, his kingdom, Satan's kingdom, will be torn down. 
So you've got to train yourself to listen to the voice of God and not hear the voice of the enemy because you'll become vulnerable to him, vulnerable to his tricks, vulnerable to his attacks, vulnerable to his traps. And you won't really know, my God, how you're walking into something because you're going backwards. You're going backwards. You got to continue to move forward in the things of God and see all the things that God has in store for you. Knowing that because the Lord has said it, he's spoken it in his word. And even though you may not see it with your natural eye, you got to see it with your spiritual eye because God has such great and mighty promises that he said for you. Promises of God, they are yea and they are amen. Listen, when you look back, when you turn back, when you go back, to the things of the past. Perhaps what you might find, because the enemy is cunning, that you will have a short-term reward. But in the end, it'll cause you to become the slave to the enemy that he's trying to make you to become. And Paul, again, is warning the Galatians not to turn back, not to the turn back to the, the garbage, the junk in the trunk of the past, but to go forward because God has promised you favor, God has promised you victory as you go forward. Yes, Dr. Evelyn, look where he brought me from. He brought me from a mighty long throw. He brought me from danger, seen and unseen. But as he continues to bring me out of darkness into light, I don't want to go back into darkness. I don't want to go back into the place that I couldn't see. Back into the place where I was groping to find a direction. Turning back means you turn your back on the one who truly loves you and truly knows you. You turn your back on your first love. You, you turn your back on God. Good morning, Jeremy. And when you turn your back, you find that you are not, don't have better freedom, that you have bondage. Listen, but the worst, that's not the worst thing of turning your back, turn your back on God. The worst thing is by turning your back to the old, you wind up turning your back on the only one who truly loves you. Truly loves you. You think you're going back to the people, to the places that knew you, that loved you. But only God knows you. Only God loves you. The Bible says we were created in the image of God, in his likeness where we created. As a matter of fact, it says we were fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. Only he knows us. He predestined us for a thing before we were created in our mothers and our womb. He created us. He predestined us. He formed a relationship with us. And it looks a lot different than that relationship that the enemy has with us. All the enemy wants to do is take from us. He wants to kill. He wants to steal. The enemy wants to make us look bad in the public. He wants to ruin our reputations. He wants us to connect us to people that are going the wrong way so that we can fall into the traps and the snares that they're falling into. But the Lord wants only what's good for us. He says, I know the plans, the thoughts that I have for you. They're good thoughts. They're good plans. Plans to bring you to an expected end. So instead of us going back to the things of the old, the Lord says, I need you to come into the things of the new. I need you to continue to walk. Follow my voice. If you can't see the Lord, if you can't see what he's doing, follow his voice. And that's why Paul is thinking it's crazy that we would turn our backs on the Lord. Turn our backs on the one who protects us. Turn our backs on the one who heals us. Turn our backs on the one who shields us from dangers. Turn our backs from the one who, even if there is a situation in our lives, he is the one that will work it out for our good. We ask him for it. He does it for us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows us better than our mothers and our fathers. He knows us better than our spouses. No matter how long you've been married, he knows us. And as a matter of fact, the Lord here is even saying himself, return unto me. You say, look, I won't. I refuse to go back. I refuse to go back to the old. I refuse to turn my back on God. 
Good morning, Sister Nimby. I, I refuse. He chose us before the foundation of the world. It says in Ephesians 1, 1 and 4. Your name is given in the palm of God's hand. Never to be scratched out. Never to be removed. He sent Jesus, his only and begotten son, to die in your place for your salvation. He says, my arms are not too short. We know he sits high. He looks low. He sees everything that's going on. He says, my arms are not too short to reach down and touch every infirmity that you might have. He has pledged us to give us good pleasure, even in Luke chapter 12, 32. Pledged for us his own good pleasure to give you his kingdom. Why would we go back? Why would we turn back? Why would we go back to the things of old? Why would we go back to the things of the enemy? Good morning, Brother Robert. Why would we turn our back? Because when we turn our back, it causes us that everything that we've built up, everything that we've gathered, everything that we've created, everything that has been invested in us, it, it, it's, over. it's done away with. Because we, we make it of none effect. We make our worship of none effect. We make the walk that we had before him of none effect. Because we turn back. And as he said, I am afraid I may have labored in vain over you. Don't let that be said of any of us. Because we have to understand that Paul was concerned about the people of God. Just as preachers, teachers are concerned about the people of God. I am concerned about you. I believe that's why the Lord led me to do this meditation this morning because he sees a sense of urgency. There's a personal investment that the Lord has given to each and every one of us. And he's saying, don't squander that. Don't throw that all away. And going back to the things of the enemy. He said, the enemy does not love you. He doesn't even know you. And he doesn't want what's best for you. He says, but I do. I have your best interest at heart. He says, I will. Whatever you need, the Lord says, I will supply that thing. Whatever it is, he, he, he is calling you back. Just as a father calls back his son. And I love the prodigal son. He says, I will receive you back. Not only will I receive you back, but I will give you the ring. I will, I will kill the fatted calf for you. I will give you everything that you need. So you have to understand that we cannot turn away from the faith because if we do, we're wasting all of the investment that someone, God, the teachers, your mentors, everyone has put into you and you're, and you're, and you're, you're squandering those things over the, the people that have labored over you. Does it mean anything? I refuse to turn back. I refuse, you refuse after the Lord has poured so much into me. And giving me so much. Yes, I believe the word of God where it says to whom much is given, much is required. But just because much is required, it doesn't mean that I can't move forward. Can I handle what is required? Yes, because the Lord is able to grace me to do everything that is that he's called for me to do. Is it a hard road? Maybe it is. But you're not walking this road alone. There is no greater joy that Christ has than to see us walking in the truth. Walking, not stumbling, not blindly looking in the darkness, not going backwards. 1 Thessalonians 3 and 8, it says, they will truly live if they see that you are standing fast in the Lord. Life will come when you are moving forward in the things of God, when you are standing fast in the Lord. So don't turn back. Don't go back. It's not the way forward. You got to go forward. And just like the Israelites who found themselves in the wilderness, they wanted to go back. The Galatians also were in the wilderness and they wanted to go back. And some of us too are in the wilderness and we want to go back. All of us have experienced Christ, but you've not made it to the promised land yet. But you're finding your way forward and it is a difficult road. So although you're tempted to go back, I'm saying to you this morning and I'm admonishing you, don't go back because going back will not get you to the place where you want to be. 
it will not get you to the promised land. And sometimes, just like the children of Israel, the only way to the promised land was through the wilderness. Morning, Sister Leslie. Good morning to you. The only way to the promised land sometimes is through the wilderness. So you've got to go through some things in order to get what it is that God has for you. You've got to be pruned. You've got to be tried by the fire in order to withstand the attacks of the enemy. But you've got to go forward because going forward will lead you into freedom. Going forward to lead you into life. Going back only puts you into slavery, into bondage, and ultimately into a spiritual death. But going forward will lead you into the kingdom of God. Going forward will get you the things that you need in God. Going forward will help you to know that the Lord is King of kings and he is Lord of lords. Going forward will help you to understand that the Lord will help you. He will pick you up and he will carry you if he has to. But go forward. Make your way forward. I refuse to go back. I refuse to go back to the old way. I refuse to go back where I was a slave to the enemy. I refuse to go back. I refuse. And this morning I say to you, don't go back. Go forward. No matter what you see, no matter what others may show you, no matter what the enemy is speaking in your ear, no matter how good it sounds, how good it looks, how good it feels, there's a better way, and the better way is forward in God. If this word has been a blessing to you and you believe it will be a blessing to someone else, I ask that you will share this word. Because we as the children of God, we as the people of God, need to band together as a mighty army for the Lord and move forward. Forward march. Not going back, not retreating, not regretting the things that we do to turn our backs on God. Continue to move forward in him. Father God, we just bless your name. We bless you. We thank you for who you are. We praise you, Lord God, because you are, Lord, our God. You are sovereign God. Lord God, you are omnipotent, not omnipotent, Lord God. You're all powerful. You're omniscient. You know everything, Lord, but you know everything about us. You know about our ways, oh Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Even teach us even more that we may serve you, God, and love you, God, and come to know who you are, God, that we will never turn back, no matter how difficult it might be, no matter how hard the road that we walk, Lord, we won't turn back because we know, Lord God, you have a plan for us, a great plan. And if we can continue to go forward in God, we will reach victory. When we reach victory, oh God, we will have everything, God, that you've already said, promised in the word that we should have. God, as our obedience to you, God, continues, God, and moves forward, God. Thank you, Lord God, that we shall do, God, everything according to your word. And God, you then shall do what you said you will do. I bless you, God, because I will not go back. I refuse to go back. Refuse to go back to the old way. Refuse to go back, God, to the mundane things. But we'll move forward in the excellent things that you've called for me to move forward in, Lord God. And then for that, I will give you praise. I will honor you, Lord God. I will celebrate you during this time of transition in our lives. During this time of crisis, we will celebrate you and we will move forward with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, people of God. Good morning to all of you. Sister Shirley, good morning. Sister Dorothea, good morning to you. Let this word not stay with you, but I want you to share it with somebody else because there's somebody that you know has reached a point in their lives and they don't know what to do. They're at crossroads. And at that crossroads, they're deciding they're making a decision if they should turn back to the way of the world they should if they should turn back if they're making a decision if this god thing if this christian walk is the walk that they should go on i want you to help them to understand that going back is not an option and the only way that they can move forward is to go forward i love you all with the love of jesus you have a wonderful day